So on the AWS and for the exam, you kind of need to know the instance types, but not all of them because there are so many, just the main ones. So I'm going to give you a small rundown of the instance type you can choose on AWS. The R instance is the application that needs a lot of RAM. So R for RAM, such as in-memory cache or in-memory databases or whatever. So this is the R instance for RAM. C is going for, for, for good CPU or compute. And so this is where you have databases usually or applications that do a lot of computations, such as big data. This is the good uh, instances for these. M is in, is in the middle, think medium, think middle. So it's between RAM and between CPU. So you use M instances for a web app or something very, very general. I is for good IO or instant storage. So when you need a lot of good IO, a lot of good disk operations, this is a database you're going to need and you need the I instance. G stands for GPU. So G instances come with a GPU and they're great for video rendering or even machine learning since machine learning uses GPU. And then there is the instances we've been using so far, T2 or T3, and we'll be using T2 because that's the one in the free tier. But they're called burstable instances. And so that means that you get a good performance for a burst for a short while, but then if you over abuse that burst, then you lose a burst and you lose your capacity. We'll see this in a second. And then we have T2, T3 unlimited, which gives you unlimited burst. So overall, uh, if in the real world to choose the instance type you need, I suggest you use the EC2 instances, the info website, it is amazing. So let's go on it real quick. We type EC2 instances.info. And here we get basically a comparison of all the instances on AWS. And this is a very, very, very big table, as you can see. And there's way more than just what I told you. There is some Z instances, whatever. But what you need to remember is the one I gave you. So R, C, M, I, G, and T. Okay. And so just explore that table. It's kind of neat to see what each instance does. They give you the instance storage, the performance, the number of CPUs, the memory, and the cost as well, uh, which is really, really, really cool. And they also give you some information if you want to reserve your instances and so on. So let's get back to our little um, course. And so basically the burstable instances is T2, T3. And so with these instance, that means that overall, you know, when the instance is running, you get good performance, okay CPU performance, it's doing fine. And then sometimes, maybe you need to process something very unexpected, maybe there's a spike of load in your application and your CPU skyrockets and it goes to 100%. In this case, during these spikes, the CPU can do something called a burst and a burst is like a boost of power and the CPU is very good during that burst. But if your machine bursts, it uses burst credit. And as you can expect, if the credits are all gone, then the CPU becomes bad, or I may say terrible. And then when your load is over, when the CPU is stopped bursting, then you gain back the credits over time. So this is what the burstable instances are. They're good, then they accumulate credits, and then when you need them the most, when they need a, a very unexpected load, they're amazing. And then if you do abuse that, you just lose all the capacity and they become very, very bad. So they can be amazing. But basically, if you learn, run low on credit all the time, then you probably shouldn't use T2 and T3. You should probably use something like a C or a M type of instance. So how do we see the credit usage and balance? Well, in CloudWatch, we can see this. And so as you can see, this is just for a dummy uh, instance that I have. But so when the CPU skyrockets, you can see that the, C the credit usage here is very, very high and the credit balance goes down, but after the uh, the CPU credit usage is done, after we're not using it anymore, then we slowly gain back our credit balance into a normal zone. And so this is what you have to deal with. You have to be very careful and obviously monitor the credit usage and balance over time, otherwise you may have surprises. Now the CPU credits, you basically gain them at different space and you can find this in the documentation, but basically the bigger the instance, if you have a T2 large, the faster you're gonna earn credits and the better is going to be the CPU. And finally, there is this thing called T2, T3 Unlimited. And since November 2017, basically what you get is unlimited burst credit balance. That means you can burst for as long as you want, but you're going to pay for it. And so you need to make sure that you don't burst for no reason. And it's a new offering, so be very careful. I find it very nice, but it needs to be for very, very specific kind of use cases. And you need to monitor your, in your health of your instances. Uh, otherwise, you're going to pay a lot of money. And you can read more 
in this blog. So that's it for the instance types. Again, I think what you should remember mostly is going to be which kind of instance to use in case you need RAM, CPU, medium, IO or GPU. And also remember how T2 and T3 work under the hood. They become very, very bad if you don't expect uh, how they work. And then you can have production issues all of a sudden if you get a big load. Okay, so that was it. I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next lecture.